Many humans are born with problems in their digits, and we know this is not, not caused by genes. But DNA doesn't contain only genes. It also contains gene deserts, which is used to be called junk DNA. Now, genes which are necessary to develop digits are controlled by enhancer sequences, which are located within these gene deserts. And in this work, we have discovered seven such enhancer sequences that together control the expression of genes in digits. Modifications in these enhancer sequences can lead to genetic defect, and spontaneous modification of these enhancers may also have led to the great variety of forms you can see in hands and feet in vertebrates. So you see here a molecule of DNA and the presence of these different enhancer sequences. And here in a tissue where the genes are not expressed in the brain, these islands come together but not really and therefore these genes are not activated. Now in contrast, in the digits here, in the developing digits where you need those genes to be activated, these different regulatory islands come together with other factors and as a result the genes become activated. And this is why we call this a regulatory archipelago. So if one of these regulatory islands is modified, mutated or disappear or is duplicated, then that will directly impact upon the activation of these genes and that can cause many aspects of genetic syndromes like too many digits or digits too short or badly organized. Now we realize that the way genes are controlled is also very, very important. For example, in the case of the seven regulatory islands that we have discovered, one might imagine that if one modifies a little bit the activity of one or another one, if we duplicate, then it will impact on the efficiency of the genes and that may participate to evolutionary novelty and generate limbs which are as different, for example, as the limb of an ostrich, which is incredible, two digits, or the limb of a seal or the limb of a human being. 